A week or so ago, I had the very touching experience to travel to Panama City to help with the Hurricane Michael relief. As a guy from New Jersey, Hurricane Irma was my first true experience with a bad hurricane since I had already moved south before Superstorm Sandy hit New Jersey. Irma was a difficult experience for me and my family and for so many of those I knew down here in Southern Florida that I felt called to go up north to help since I had the time. Paul Unsworth, a good friend of mine and a knight from our parish, and I spent most of a week up there. This weekend, I'd like to share with you some of those experiences because it is already out of the news, but yet the struggle continues. I wanted to share how St. Agnes and our neighboring Catholic brothers and sisters, especially those in Catholic charities, were the angels that Jesus sent to help the least of his brothers who were in need. The story starts with all the donations that were collected and sent to Catholic Charities Judy Sullivan Family Resource Center for distribution in the Panhandle. We had so many items donated here and such willing folks to make many trips to and from Judy Sullivan to deliver all these items. As you can see, there were many different types of items that were sent by the various churches in Collier County. As you'll be able to also see, everything was just put into boxes, bags, randomly just thrown into the room. So I requested a number of helpers from St. Agnes and they responded by spending a half a day or more with me down at Judy Sullivan by sorting all of these items into the various um, materials that were donated. The next slide shows that as we approached the date to ship these, all those sorted items had to be packed into boxes so we could efficiently use the space on the truck. And by the way, with the help of Paul, he was able to find someone who agreed to donate the truck rental and our Knights of Columbus from our parish agreed to pay for the gasoline to get the truck from Naples to Panama City. So at this point in time, we literally had thousands of pounds, be it tons of donations, including all that canned food, water, cleaning supplies, etc. And they had it to be loaded onto the truck. Frankly, there was no way a few of us could lift all of this, but a new set of angels arrived. I asked Emily from St. John Newman High School if they could help out, and she responded with sending the football team and their girlfriends, which will arrive Saturday morning, to load this truck. I have to say she was very clever in sending some of the good-looking young women to join these guys. Boy, were they trying to impress these young girls by showing off how much they could lift. I found out later that they had played a football game the night before, and amazingly, they were still there to help us, as tired as they must have been. These young people were sensational help, and I continue to always tell Sister Pat how proud she should be of St. John Newman High School. As we were arriving on the first day to volunteer, here is just some of the destruction I saw out of my window. Trailers demolished or tipped over. This wouldn't have been so bad if I hadn't known that before the storm, these trailers were someone's house. Who knows how this boat got there, was sitting on the side of the road, on its side, extremely damaged. I guess it's obvious why they had a shortage of gasoline, not because the trucks couldn't make it to the sites, but because of the fact that most of the gas stations were quite demolished as this one was. Trees were just clipped off like twigs right across the road and all over. It was amazing how much damage was done to the trees and all the other wildlife there. This is Eglin Air Force Base. This was a hangar. Not sure what was stored in this hangar, but as you can see, the hangar was destroyed. The Air Force Base and all of its living quarters were totally destroyed, and the fence around the Air Force Base was completely gone, so security was quite tight around the Air Force Base. 
Now we arrive at St. Dominic's Church. In the back left, you can see the men up on the roof of the church because the picture window or the stained glass window was destroyed. But in a nutshell, this church, rectory, and parish hall were all severely damaged. And yet, <clears throat> they started this distribution center with a few parishioners, the priests, and then Catholic charities joining them in northern Florida. Each day they had requested 50 to 100 volunteers to help distribute all the donations that received, plus the truckloads from all the different folks who were donating, as well as FEMA who were bringing materials each day. Each morning, like this one, there was a talk for the new volunteers on how this would all work. And there was a lot of talk about safety and there was a lot of prayer before we began. The distribution center was open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and the folks in need would drive from tent to tent and be given different types of items at this location based on the family size. Each day, a constant stream of cars came through for those five hours. Water, cleaning supplies, tarps, toiletries, pet and people food were just handed out with generously to everyone in need. Hot lunches were also provided to anyone came to us. Our truck from Naples that we brought up was a huge part of the distribution for the first couple of days. So how did God provide? Let me give you just a few simple examples. After the first day we were there, we ran out of pet food. So many families had pets or had rescued cats and dogs that were abandoned or had run away in the storm. Paul and I went back to Tallahassee that night because that's where we were staying. It was about a two hour drive and we went to a Costco. We bought a few large bags of pet food which we could then divide into smaller bags the next day so at least we could give something out to the people. What was amazing though was when we got there Tuesday morning, somewhere, somehow, an overnight shipment showed up with tons of pet food. We were never short again. You see, God asked us to do our part and then he did his. Sounds a little like the loaves and the fishes miracle to me. Another day it was raining as we arrived at 9 a.m. and there was some lightning. We were told we would open the center unless we would not open the center unless the weather improved, so we all prayed. By 10 a.m. there was only a light drizzle and there was no more lightning. And until you guessed it, 3.10 in the afternoon as we were closing, the lightning and the pouring rain came back. I had another situation where we didn't have enough volunteers one morning and about 15 minutes after we opened, a school bus from a Catholic high school in Alabama showed up with more than 20 to 30 students, which then filled in all the spots. This is the church's parish hall. This is also where they did their religious education. You can see it's completely destroyed. It used to be a hall, said the priest, but now it's a solarium, open to the sky. With all that destruction, the, clerch, the church clergy, the Catholic charities representatives, and all the volunteers, and frankly, even all those who were so badly affected, continue to find humor and hope in their life situation. These people that were driving through these lanes to pick up materials, were so appreciative of everything and so many of them were shocked to hear that volunteers and supplies had all come from all the way in South Florida from Collier County. The last picture shows that after each day's closing, priests from the parish here celebrated mass out in a back field which had a small grotto. Volunteers were physically exhausted but spiritually full of all they needed for another day. I also wanted to let you know that while we were in the panhandle, Paul Todd from our parish, who's our music director, as well as a professional musician, held a benefit, a charity event for the hurricane victims. 
and his charity will be sending something like $10,000 to Catholic Charities in Northern Florida for hurricane relief. So my friends, I know that the Catholic Church has been struggling with horrible behaviors from a number of its clergy, but please know there is so much good that's also being done by the Catholic Church, by this parish, and by so many other Catholic churches. This week reminded me again of all the positives. It reminds me again that when we do our part, God promises to do his part and he delivers. I'm very proud of our parish and all those who helped these struggling families in any way. Through our own social ministry, Justice and Peace Committee, we plan to keep doing more in the future for all those struggling right here in our backyard. May God continue to bless all those who are suffering from this storm and for other storms in their lives. Amen.